guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We are live at the, sh I was gonna say at the shop. We're <laughs> live at the farmhouse. I'll move this over so you guys can see me. We are excited because we are working on some bar stools. Every now and then we order items from our wholesale website and they're not exactly what we had hoped they would be. So we haven't had these on the website because they went perfect. And we've had them for how many months? Um, these have been sitting in the corner in the garage at the house waiting for me to weld them for probably four or five months. We've also had three at the shop um, that I was going to list as project bar stools and never did, but I finally did that. So if you watch us do this and you're like, hey, I think I can make those bar stools work for me, you can pick them up at jrvhome.com. They are listed with including shipping, which is like the majority of what you're paying for. Um, and we're just taking a loss on them because they weren't that great. Sometimes it's just not what you expect, right? Yeah, so what happened is we got them in here and they were, so these, I'll bring it close so you can see it. Um, also, if you guys like DIYs and fixes and farmhouse videos, make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell so that way you never miss a video. All right, so right here, they had this thread, right? Not, that goes down in there. And when you would roll it up, it was wobbly. Even all the way down, it, the stool was still and wobbly. And it wasn't like you can't sit on it, just, you know, a little bit. Of, like, this part is sturdy, but the... This part was not tight enough. So this was this was bad. Um, and I don't know that it's necessarily bad or even defective, but it wasn't gonna work for us with little kids. They're gonna be falling off, spilling stuff. Wasn't gonna be good. So what I did is I did like a, just an ugly little tack weld right here because I'm not a very good welder. And now they're really solid and we're gonna paint it anyway, so that won't even matter. If you don't have a welder, a thought I had to get these to tighten up if you wanted Jamie to. Weld. Um, you could glue them, like find the height you want and use like an epoxy. But I was thinking also like three, four wraps of duct tape around the thread and then you run it up in there and that would probably hold it pretty tight or well, something like that. If you have ever seen these bar stools, this particular industrial style, they're like minimum a hundred dollars. So that's why I like these because I was like, oh, they're a good deal. And then I got them and I was like, oh, they have to be fixed. But they're like, you can just pitch them. And I'm like, I can't just throw them away. So we've decided to fix them, which is what we're doing. These are gonna be used at the farmhouse. We have not decided if we're gonna do four or five. So we probably should check that out before we get started. Okay, well, let's, let's, uh, let's pull it back here and show them. we're gonna do. So um, we are going to, watch out, I've got extension cords running out. We're using this for construction. Yeah, I'm wearing, we got these new sweaters in on the home website and I'm wearing it because we can't heat in here until we get that a little more buttoned up and then we'll have the heater in both places and it's cold it's getting chilly okay so these don't have felt on the bottom they're metal so we'll have to be careful before we get felt. oh i have felt don't you worry your pretty little head about that so we tested the height at our other bar at the house i hope it's right and i think we i think it's fine because i based have felt. yeah i based this height i don't know i think five is too many i don't know because we've got it's long this is nine feet long. I say we keep four there, but we finish five and we put that one maybe in the desk that we have in the family room. That way if we need five, we can fit it. Because you can fit five tiny humans there. Yeah, five, five is tight. I think four would be good. Yeah, we'll keep four and we'll just keep the other one tucked away and then we'll have it for if we need it. Let me... Five, five will fit. But if you were five adults sitting there, five would be tight. So I think four looks good there, and it's the right number. Let me Caitlin, see. this sweater is on the home site. Christy got this up. We've had it for a few days. We've already sold um, a couple, but you should be able to find the link for this sweater. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, and Jane says they look nice, and Leslie says she's wearing, a, wearing her olive sweater from JRB. And you guys know what's awesome? You guys already know that Caitlin is the bomb.com. But she bought the website jrvhome.com for us. And so now, if you want to go to the home website, you don't have to type in Jamie Ray Vintage Home. You can just type in jrvhome.com and it'll take you to the home decor and uh, furniture. We, we got to get more. Uh, we got to get more uh, furniture in here. It's echoey. It's echoey. <laughs> I did add some decorations back since I'm not sanding floors anymore. I had to take them away for a hot minute, but we have decorate it a little bit. Okay, I'll get started painting. 
Zeb is actually going to unscrew one of the tops and get started sanding. So the tops aren't bad, but They're we're fine. going with a light wood, and this is kind of more of like a reddish brown. So we're going to sand them down and stencil them. <laughs> Donna says, or you can just have the website bookmarked. She <laughs> may or may not have it bookmarked already. Okay, let me get these felts off, and then I'm going to duck out for a minute and sand a couple of these tops so that we can stencil them, and you can see... Are you just going to do like the numbers like one, two, three, four? One, two, three, four, five. Five. Yeah. That way we know when one's missing, right? Where's stool number three? Where did three go? How are you going to get these out? Like they're at an angle. Oh. oh there we go. Look at that. Doing it. I'll, I'll get it with a regular screwdriver. So I was like, please don't strip them. Yeah, that's, that makes it harder for me. <laughs> I'm not super good with that one must, yeah, there we go. All right, we're pulling these pads off so we can get them all painted. We're painting in little black dress, right? Like the actual bases? Yeah. I just can't get those two screws. Okay. I actually don't, you know what I would do? Oh, they already have holes. I was going to say, you could just stay on this side. Yeah, well, and they're, they're uh, rounded on the edges, so it's not sharp. All right, so you just got to get these. Oh! <laughs> yeah, they come off in individual pieces. Uh, yeah. So let's just do one at a time. <laughs> Stool number one. All right, I'll go sand that while you paint it. And hopefully it sands uh, quick. You're in charge of taking those two off. Okay, I'll get those. I might have That's to get hilarious. a different screwdriver. I had a feeling that that might be the case. So they're... <laughs> yeah. I'm just glad they got that. Ooh, that was loud. So with the black doors, we're going some accents black or light wood. Like that's the theme, white, black, and light wood. Cool Cake says she loves the brown color. That The way that they are is not bad. Like honestly. No, they use, look kind of rusty. You could actually use them as is. Meaning like they were a little bit like wobbly, but you could have used them. I just, it would make my eye twitch. So I was like, nope, got to fix it. Okay. You take that out. Here, I'm, I'm going to take, take this off. You think you off. can get it off? Um, or that's not looking like I can. What I would just take the drill bit out and just do it by hand, maybe. Yeah, we're going to have to get creative because that's so short right there. And since I've already welded them, we should have taken them off before the welding happened. Yeah, so we're painting in black, but we're keeping the tops All right. wood. Let me go grab a... Part of me is like, maybe I should just left them the stain that they are and... <laughs> I can never leave well enough alone. Zeb's got to get them apart. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so we will have felt pads on the bottom. All of our furniture will have these to protect the floors. Anytime you have like wood floors or tile or anything, painted or not, you don't want your floors scratched. So sometimes what we've been known to do, this has, is like put stuff on here and then use like super glue to keep the felt on. <laughs> Sometimes these aren't the best. I feel Don't like worry, I've got my makeshift vice grip screwdriver. You are the best. You're like the MacGyver of the furniture. Well, I have short little screwdrivers at home, but not, not here. All of the tools have not made it over to the farmhouse yet. Donna says that her kids think, or her cats think that the felt pads are cat toys. <laughs> Do they like to try to pull them off and bat them around the floor? I guess. I don't know. I have bar stools at our house right now. So if we get these done, we'll just move these over there. Or we can just use the ones we have at the desk because I do need to sell those. There's a few things I need to take out of that house and get sold that's not coming over here. That's part of it. Yeah, those, those old chemistry class bar stools have been hard used. But they're, I, I bet I could sturdy those ones up too. I was thinking about just selling the white Ikea furniture because we're going to use the big sectional in the, in the family room and we were going to put the white Ikea furniture in the theater room, but I don't think that's like the best theater room seating. No. Our, if I sell them, then we don't have to move them. I think you should anything. wait until we see what the big loungy couch looks like in, in the family, the family room. room because I don't want you to be like, oh, I hate that and then have to buy new couches. I mean, oops. <laughs> I mean, worst case scenario, the loungy furniture moves in the theater room, and then I buy a whole new living room set. No. Is that, is that <laughs> what you're worried about? Yes. <laughs> we have lots of nice couches, I guess, so 
No, no reason to. We have a okay. couch situation. Okay, now I can paint. Now you can paint that. I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna go uh, sand these real quick. I don't think it'll be too hard. They they are sealed. You can kind of see, but I'm gonna hit them with 80 grit. And you don't. You only need to go around just a little bit of the lip. Yeah. Well, because we'll see how easy it I'm is. I'm just saying sand. you don't need to go all up because only to right here because everything underneath doesn't show. Okay, I'll be right back. Mariah says I can use those IKEA couches. I know, but Mariah, do you want to buy the IKEA couches? I don't know that you do. There, there's probably some better things that the boys could bounce on than those. I mean, they're fine for the living room, but white, basement, I don't know. All right, so I'm just gonna do one coat of little black dress on these, and then I will seal it. I'm not worried about perfection because it's so dark underneath, you can't really see where it doesn't fit. And I actually don't even care if they scratch over time and the brown shows through because the more aged, the better. Oh gosh. Definitely, if you have bar stools and they're metal like this, if you paint like this part of the bar stool, those always chip off over time. What the heck? Oh, I have like paint flecks falling down because I had used these for milk paint. Can you see? <laughs> Cut falling off of my brush. I better get those off so they don't get in my paint finish. That's hilarious. All right, I think I got it all. Anyways, I painted bar stools like this and where the kids put their feet, over time they always like, no matter what paint you use, it comes off. So keep that in mind when you're painting bar stools. Probably doesn't even look like that different of a color. All right, I'm hoping it warms up because I really don't want to get little black dress on my new sweater and I was done and this is all I brought today. Mariah's like, but they do have to survive your three boys. Yeah, you could buy new covers, but the covers are expensive. So I'm going to say no on the white couches in the basement. They've been okay in the living room, but my kids are well-trained. Although right now they're filthy because my dad is not well-trained. And the kids have been left to their own devices a lot while we've been working on the farmhouse. And I have not washed them in probably a good since Mother's Day. So they need to be bleached bad. Although my friend Karen came over the other day and she told me that she didn't think they were too bad for not having been bleached in four months. So I was feeling pretty good about myself. Where these stools come from? So they come, they came from one of our wholesalers. So not somewhere where you guys could like buy them or whatever. Um, and they don't even make them anymore because they had problems with them. But we do have three that we're gonna sell um, for $69.95 each with shipping. Most of that is the shipping cost. And I put them up on the website. In case anybody does know how to weld or is willing to use JB Weld. Because even at that price, they're a good deal, especially since they include shipping. And we don't need eight of them. Have you sprayed stools with Rust-Oleum? Um, yes, I have. And all paints will wear off over time. It doesn't really matter what you use. Like DIY paint sticks to metal really well. Um, and I'm not saying it's going to be horrible. I'm just saying like over time where your kids put their feet on, they just tend to wear off. I'm just being real. Those would be cute as end tables. They would be Jane. Do I get black paint on my sweater? Well, how does that? I'm good. I'm good. It's cold. I might brave it and take this off. Um, JB Weld. So I had a question about that. So JB Weld, you can look it up. Like they sell it on Amazon, Walmart, Home Depot. It's just a two-part epoxy, and it fixes a lot of things. I, my Karen, also my friend Karen said. That her dad fixed so much stuff with JB Weld that they thought that they wouldn't be able to sell their house because it probably wasn't put together very well. Because JB Weld fixes a myriad of issues. All right, I think I'm going to take these off. Deborah says, I see you now have decoupage paper. What do you use to seal the paper? So I don't want to take this off and get paint on it for my fingers. Decoupage paper, I use Liquid Patina by DIY. Or I use a D, uh, Sweet Pickens top coat because the decoupage paper we sell is like a tissue paper consistency. 
so it's not super thick. So you can totally use the Sweet Pickens top coat to decoupage with it, or you can use liquid patina. Deb and I are actually designing, so what we have on the website now is all we're gonna get of these designs because we are in the middle of designing our own decoupage paper. And I know that sounds crazy because we're also working on the farmhouse, but at night when we're in bed watching Star Trek, <laughs> we've been designing our own uh, decoupage paper. So hopefully we'll get some ordered from our manufacturer this week and we'll have them in a few weeks to show you guys. With the current situation, sometimes getting a hold of product right now is a little bit difficult. So Zeb and I were like, let's just design our own because then we can control how long it takes to get the product. So that's what we're doing. Zeb, I don't know, you guys probably didn't know, but Zeb actually has a degree or almost degree in graphic design. He was one class shy of his associate's degree in graphic design. He went to school when the kids were little. He was actually a stay-at-home dad and I worked um, for two years while he went to school and right before we moved to Utah he almost had his degree but we felt like this is where we should live so we put that on the back burner so he hasn't really used his degree much but it's coming in handy now while we design stuff because he can make a lot of digital mock-ups and he's got really good layout skills all right oh he's back it's not the one lady show anymore well, I hang on. I gotta go get a band-aid. I zipped the top of my cuticle off with the oh. edge of the sandpaper. Okay. So I'll be right back. There's some in the bathroom. Not many. I need to re resupply our first aid kit. is getting low here. All right. I think that's good. I'm not going to worry about painting this bottom part here. It's like mostly painted, which is good enough for me. All right. Let's... Now I gotta move this over. This is really predicament. All right. The sweater has to go over here. If you guys haven't watched, we do have a new farmhouse video up showing us getting the siding started. Oops. Okay. The question remains, do I stencil them? I guess I'll do it like this. All right. So this is just the natural wood, which is the color we're going for. And I brought, we've got these new five inch numbers. They're like really tall numbers and they're kind of like the old school. I'll bring it close. Oh, I was going to bring the camera to you. <laughs> they're the old school numbers. So the one's kind of at a slant. It does look like an italic eye, but yeah. it's a one. It's a one. It's the way they used to do numbers back in the day. I like all things old. Um, Anyways, you can get these at jmeraybintage.com. <laughs> I almost Careful. said JRV, jmeraybintage.com. Or if you go to jrvwholesale.com, we have 120, 120 stencil retailers now. So you might have one near you. Ooh. So I'm going to put this There's right. There's a good chance. I know. I'm super excited about that. Put this right in the middle and I'm going to stencil number one. Does this look centered to you? Yeah. All mm. things eyeball. Do we have... Somewhere to offload this. Can you guys see that? Oh yeah, you can see it. Um, right. just I got a slim chickens box here. All right. We don't get paid to advertise for them, but they're delicious. Lunch from yesterday. Yeah, we love slim chickens. They're new. We didn't have any in Utah that I know of, and they built one in Lehigh, and I'm happy they did. Yeah, I'm not worried about offloading a ton because this is super dry, so it's just gonna soak that paint up. I love numbering bar stools. It's like my favorite. You know, anytime we number them, and it doesn't really matter if the numbers are in sequence or not, they sell really fast. Like even if we have one or two, we'll put a random number on there, like a seven or a nine or an eight or something. And the numbered ones always sell faster Thank than you. not numbered. It's a funny thing. All right, the only problem I'm having is that these are kind of moving on me. Oh yeah, that we, I may have needed to screw them on. Yeah, I think so. All right, that's okay. That's it looks okay. Good. It looks it looks great. And I'm going to paint the inside of it out there because it was looking weird, like the paint wasn't getting down into the oh into the crack. Into I think it crack. would have been all right. It would have looked like an old crate well, that has slats. Now the old crate has been fixed. There we go. Number one is done. Well, the problem is now I'm ready for number two. Hold on, finish painting it. I did. I oh, it's out. already. <laughs> Stop it. DIY is that fast, then. It is that fast. It sticks to everything, and they're already brown, so it only takes one coat. It's okay. Okay, I will go. I can answer the questions. 
I will go Sam Oh, this. Karen, I am so glad you ordered that metal lamb because it is now out of stock. The manufacturer no longer carries it, and it was our last lamb. I actually had it here decorating, and Christy called me, and she's like, I'm going to need that lamb back. <laughs> So hopefully they carry them again at some point in the future because I love the lambs. And I know Christy's shipping your order today or tomorrow. Um, let's see. What's the old and gray sitting there for? Where? Is it old and gray? No, this it's, is it's big It has top. old and gray city that's spilled on the outside. So this it. was, you guys, we use everything that gets damaged in shipping becomes our supplies. So this is big top. And it's just got old and gray that's spilled on it. All right, I'm almost, I've almost got this one ready to go sand in. I would have put the date we got buried. Yeah, but then, like, do you put that on every bar stool? Or, like, this, we got married, when did we get married? August 7th. Come on now. No, August 17th, 17, 2001. 2001. So is that, that's six bar stools. We only have five. So. Next year is 20 years. One, two, three, four, five is significant because we have five children. There we go. Okay. But Harrington's gone, so that bar stool will have to be removed and put somewhere else in the house until he gets home. Yeah, when he comes home, we'll be like, and here's your bar stool. Put it back up. See, it is totally significant. <laughs> Only sit in your number. That way, if there's smudging on it, you know you like it was you. Like your own bar stool. <laughs> All right, this is going slow. Margie says her, her daughter numbered her stairs. stairs. I want to do that. Ooh. I haven't committed to, I've actually been planning on it. I've had two ideas for the stairs. One, I thought about doing grain sack stripes up the risers or two numbering them and i might number the stairs to the basement and do three different ones upstairs i don't know i have two sets of stairs so i'm super excited i vote i vote numbers because that's going to be way easier than the great sex drive jane says they've had just had their 44th wedding anniversary that were kids Woo i feel that way when people are like oh we've been married five years or ten years and i'm like oh well, we're mom, almost 20. your mom and dad have been married 65. 60, 65 years this year my parents all right, I'll, let me go do more sanding. If you're wondering about the sanding, it's just an orbital sander. It's a little 3M DeWalt with some 80 grit. And I'll try not to get my finger this time. And we would take you guys outside, but it's very, very loud. So as soon as this is dry, Zeb will screw that back on. We'll top coat that and we'll probably top coat. We probably won't top coat the base of this till later. So as I suspected, this is actually sanding pretty well. It's shiny, but it's only got like one or two coats on there. So it's zipping right through it. All right. I'm using a little black dress in case you're just tuning in. This is like the black of the farmhouse. Everything black goes this color of the doors, the windows. Once you paint where Zeb welded it, you can't tell it is not like the perfect weld. These were actually a Zeb pick. He likes industrial. And so when we were kind of designing what we were going to decorate the house with, I was like, we will get industrial bar stools. That's why I was a little bit sad when they came in and they weren't perfect because I was like, shoot, are we going to be able to use those? Because I didn't want to spend $100 to $150 a bar stool. And these were the price was right. Oh, they said 1917. That would have been good. But I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five for my kids. Because if we do 1917, like what do you put on the fifth one? I don't know. Decisions, decisions. And the sit, the kids cannot make the seat spin. Yes, that actually, honestly, even if they weren't wobbly, I probably would have found a way to make them so that way they were not movable because yeah, right now, our, we have really old um, like science chairs from the University of Utah. They're vintage and they squeak and my kids are pretty good about it, but when kids that haven't come over in a while or my kids are feeling saucy, they like to make them squeak, and it is literally the most annoying sound in the world. So I'm excited to not have chairs that can be squeaked. I know y'all think I'm super patient with children because I have so many of them, but some days I'm less patient than one might hope. Oh, they also hit, yes, yeah, so right now my chairs have backs on them because when I got them, Jack was little and I wanted backs and they swivel in the chairs and they do this and they hit the metal backs of my science chairs to the countertops and it, that is also annoying and I'm like, listen, if you don't stop that, you're going to be eating on the floor outside.
Oh, thank you. Karen says there's a coziness to your home that no one can reproduce. You know what? I, think, I feel like coziness is reproduced in a lot of ways. Sometimes houses are overdone and they're not actually livable, but you can take a home and add texture and hominess, a little bit of industrial with a lot of white, which doesn't sound like that would be easy to keep up, but like I said, we bleach our couches and it's usually pretty simple. And just do things that you love, but it's also sustainable. And you can totally make a cozy home. I'm always thinking of ways that I can decorate that will not be obtrusive. You will probably notice if you ever come to my house that I don't put a lot of stuff down low. Most of my decorating is done up high. <laughs> that way kids don't touch my stuff. Although every now and then a new kid will come over and I'll be like, oh, I didn't think about that because my kids are pretty well trained not to mess with decor like on my table and stuff. But lots of kids aren't used to that. <laughs> So they come over and they like touch my doble and I'm like that's so weird because that doble has been there for like six months and Jack has never bothered to touch the fake fruit or try to eat it. They're just used to it. It's kind of like wet paint. My kids know from about 18 months on what wet paint is and I've honestly never had my kids get into it. We keep our paint in a big cabinet in the family room and I started painting furniture when Redrick was just a baby and neither Redrick nor Jack have gotten into my paint. Now they've gotten into a myriad of other things, but not the paint. Thank you, Penny. I'm glad you're getting your brakes changed. Keeping your brakes safe is important. I actually reminds me I need to get my tires rotated on the Expedition. Zeb used to work at Discount Tire, so he's a little bit crazy about tire maintenance and brake maintenance, because he sees what happens when you don't take care of your tires. Knock on wood, I've never had a blowout, or really a flat tire for that matter, because he makes sure that our tires have a lot of tread on them, and so anytime we get a flat tire, it's a slow leak. One time I had a flat tire, and luckily I was close to a Discount Tire, so we just called them and they came and helped me out. Yeah, it does help that I let my kids paint so they don't like get curious, like they understand what paint is and how messy it is. My kids all are fairly decent at painting. Sorry, the air compressor just popped on. I need you guys to all say a quick little prayer that we find the key to the scissor lift. Lift, Zeb misplaced it. He thinks it's somewhere at home. He never misplaces anything. I'm always the one misplacing stuff, but today or yesterday, he put it somewhere and he doesn't know where it is. This one is done. When it dries, you can kind of see where you miss because the clay paint goes from light to dark. And then when you seal it, it gets dark again. So when it gets light, you can kind of see where the brown is coming through. And you got a place to put things. Super chat from Trish. Thank you. She says you are amazing. M. Clark says Utah schools. I don't know what she's asking about with Utah schools. Oh, how's the situation there? Um, it seems to be okay. We have they've had an uptake in cases in my county, mostly amongst the younger people because the college kids do not observe what they should with social distancing. So that's gone on. But my kids are in school. My boys, um, today is the last regular season game for Jack. Redrick just has his, had his last regular season game yesterday. Do we want to put these in there? I just think it would be, I'm not going to. Let me, I think it'll be all right. I I I'm going to put this one in so we can see what it looks like. Did you seal that already? Or? No, it's still wet. So it's, this one is the most dry. Okay, this one's probably going to need a second coat. But I can do the top without. Yeah, it's fine. I'll touch it up later. What was I saying? Oh. Redrick just finished his regular season last night. They're undefeated. I am that crazy mother with a cowbell that goes up and down the side. We lines. weren't, but she's discovered how fun it is to cheer for your kids at a sporting event. I actually don't love football, but I love anything my kids are excited about and that they're good at and that they love. And so when they love it, I love it. And I'm just crazy about it. So their team is undefeated going into playoffs, which is exciting. 
Yeah, Frederick's down. little team has lost two games in three years, so they don't lose very often. Yeah, I don't know. And the you know he they handled their defeat pretty well in the in the finals the first year. Yeah, but the, he was only in first grade, wasn't he? Yeah. Or, so no second grade. So in the um, second grade, when he first started playing football, they were undefeated going into playoffs, and they lost their very last game. So they and it was a team that they had beat once, um, and so they wound up being runners up. Anyways, they had never even lost a game. They didn't have any coping skills, but they did okay. And then the next year, last year, they lost one game in the regular season, but they wound up winning the championship in the playoffs. And the team, again, the team that had beat Here, them, they wound up beating just later a on. Little so. so that I can bring this over. Can I, I can't scooch right now. There's no <laughs> scooching happening. Oh, come on. You can scooch that. This is, ve this is very... You can scooch it. Yeah, I'm going to scooch you here in a second. Should have breakfast. I'm all kinds of salty around here. <laughs> Jack's little team, not quite the same as Redrick's, but he's darn cute. Jack has no idea what he's doing. He doesn't get put in very often because he's like one of only two first graders on the first, second team, and he's tiny. But he doesn't care. Like, Jack is like, I'm happy to be on the team. I'm happy to be playing football. He doesn't even know he doesn't go in that often. Jack is your... And he's a cheerleader. He, like, cheers the whole he game. He is, like, the best teammate ever. Like, he's so excited because everybody else is doing good. Last night, he was cheering so loud. I can't get in the cracks here. I don't think someone leave it. Well, you can always just pull it out. No, I'm just worried that, like, so this, uh, maybe. No, no, I'm not gonna. It's too skinny. I need a smaller brush. So, Canadian girl says, my grandson starts his first day of preschool with no masks. My daughter finally just moved away from Calgary to a very small town, far away from all the insanity. All right. Doo -doo -doo. We like small towns. Lehigh has kind of grown up around us, but when we moved here, it wasn't. It still feels small. What sandpaper did you use? I used 80 grit, and then I was gonna do 20, but it kind of left a little. It looks like it's old age pallet wood the way it ended up. Yeah, it's fine, and I, when we distress it, the numbers will powder a little bit and age uh, the unfinished wood, and I'm okay with that. If you didn't want that to happen, I would add liquid patina to your paint um, and also seal the base. And then make sure you have liquid patina added to your paint when you stencil. And then when you distress, it's a little bit better. But just be careful because this paint is very pigmented. Or another option is you spray the sealer on and they really pop. All right. Mariah says they haven't had a positive in six weeks. That's because there's like 2,000 people in your county. <laughs> Mariah lives in a very small county. Okay, I'm going to put this at the front and then I will show you the bar stool with the number one on it. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Actually, did, so I'm gonna distra I have to sandpaper it. to distress it. So, you know what, Zeb? If we move that moving blanket over here, we can work down on the floor without ruining the floor. Okay. Like you want to move it so that we can show them a little better? Yeah, well, because I'm not super tall. And then we can put the felt pads on once it's sealed. There is felt pads on it. Oh, that has felt pads yeah, on it already? Yeah, but still, there could be paint touching it. I don't want black paint before. Okay. I'm going to start taking other chairs or school apart. Is that number dry? Uh, no, not yet. You need to give it some time. That one, um, the, the number one dry. is dry. This number two is not. Okay. Oh, you split it a little. Character. Yeah. I'll just sand that and fill it with something later. No, that's fine. I don't care. So you've got two painted? Never brush this one you distress it because you will get powder everywhere. Oops. You know what? I think I'm just going to leave it. I was going to distress it, but I don't want to. It might get it. its own wear. It will get its own wear, that is for sure. All right, let's brush the dust off. And then I'll seal it. So we're not staining these at all. Just gonna leave them light. DIY big top. Oh, is that number dry? It's dry enough. Dryish. It's dry now. All right, now here's the secret, guys. I don't want this to smear, right? So I'm gonna go over it once, and then I'm not gonna mess with it. Like I'm done. I will not come back and touch up that letter and or that number until we second coat it because it will smear. So you cannot overwork it. You just barely go over it. You go super soft. 
Another thing you can do is just roll foam, like a foam roller. That works too. Just one, one and done, and don't push hard. Because essentially, this is water-based. You can just dress with water. Oops. I'm getting a nice I'm gonna have to get a new bed when I'm done. Oh, we did get a new bed. Ah, there's water paint all over me. We did get new bits. Do you know where the new bits are? I'm busy. There There's it always, goes. anytime you paint with black paint, it gets better <laughs> for you. It's like a given. It's what? It's a given. Yeah. It's all over. It's everywhere. Get it off. What's that? What's that show with the like, Get it off. I don't know. I don't know. You could use clear wax, but these are bar stools, so they're going to get a lot of abuse. I feel like I'm missing a screw. I'm just gonna go around the rim here. I feel like I'm missing a screw. Yeah. I have oh, there some, is just black on here. It's just I have some short ones, and I, it's actually a bonus screw, so maybe it won't matter. If anybody was wondering, working live is hard. I sealed the edge, and then I got a little black on it. So it just there's some distress. There's like one of my hairs in the finish, but I don't want to touch it. There Roll it out. Roll it out. I got it. It's gone. Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> Number one is done. Uh-oh. What? You had paint on here, and now I've got it over on the side. Oh. It's okay. I'm going to sand it out. It's okay. Just bring it over here. I'll fix it. I'll get it. It was on the, the base, and I didn't see it. It's fine. Oh, that's a lot of paint. Yeah. Well, I'll sand it. Don't, don't steal that yet. Can you give me a, like a wet paper towel or something? Sure. A rag. Well, a rag will do or something, anything. It's coming. Yesterday, you guys, Deb got paint on the driveway. It was not me. It was Deb. I spilled a whole cup of latex paint because we're painting the edges where we cut on the siding. Ooh, you're going to make a mess. Getting that wet. Do you want me to just take it outside real quick no, and I can. I got this. It's just adding character and age. Just adding character and patina. It's an old bar stool. It's been in an industrial setting. It's got some patina. It's fine. There we go. Good Sally night. says her superpower is that she rarely gets paint on her. No, I don't have that superpower. My superpower is that I am still alive. Is this the episode of what not to do? No, this no. is every episode. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> because it'll look good. People always stress out about stuff and it's ridiculous. Stop stressing out. Just work with it. Work with it. Like I said, it was supposed to look like old industrial bar stools. Now they're like even more authentic. All right, now I gotta get this number done. Quick, quick, don't go back over it. Probably also why we don't do custom work anymore, because people are real kinds of fussy. I get that black to go around. Now it looks like there's a little bit of gray stain. We're good. Nice. I oh, know. I'm like, dang, I'm good at this. It's like I have a DIY YouTube channel or something. I'm not reading comments. But On live videos, you always get to see like the what not to do because we can't edit out any mistakes and sometimes in our even in our edited videos we leave mistakes so you guys can see how to fix stuff because inevitably stuff's gonna happen to your finish with paint all right Here's or your number cat's two. gonna walk on it or and your dog see or it whatever. just made it a little bit worn on that side that's good all right bar stool number three are we gonna are we gonna be able to get all these done how are I we doing that time what time is it? <laughs> oh, we've got 15 say. minutes. Oh, I guess I should be back on camera. Yeah, move that, move that back over here now that you're done go. distressing. Hold on. That's why my house is cozy and lived in. That's the it's look. definitely lived in. Lived in. Stencil. It would look cool on the stool. Um, we do have some like parts 
that make it look like hardware for windows in the window maker. We could just put some nails in them. Oh, like around the edge here? No, just like to make it look like old pallet wood or whatever. Oh. But they have kind of a rustic look anyways. They're not like super Okay. whatever. Bar stool number three. All right. We're gonna and I'll try to, uh, when I screw that one on, I'll do it over here on this side. I'll be right back. I am better than I used to be at painting, and I'm actually much better at painting if I'm not live, because when I'm live, I'm trying to work fast, I'm trying to respond to comments, I'm trying to be nice and not too salty, but if no one's around, I'm not too bad. I used to get paint everywhere. Heidi says, I painted, painted my piano beadboard and dripped paint on her hardwood floor. Simple green to the rescue. Yeah, the nice thing about DIY paint is it does wash off. The thing about the black, though, is it's so pigmented, so it, it, it's not easy to get off. But the whites come off a lot of stuff. I shouldn't say how much paint I've actually got out of the carpet that I live, the house I live at right now, but let's just say I'm pretty good at it. Yesterday, when Zeb got the paint on the driveway, I just took some cleaner straight to it and a scrub brush and the hose, and I was able to get it off. The thing with me working with cement, if you get paint on it, you've got to get to it right away because cement's super porous, and it just soaks that paint up. But it does wear off over time. Our driveway that we live on right now used to have paint all over it when we painted at the house all the time, but now that we don't, it's worn off. It's also worn out of our kitchen sink. Our kitchen sink used to be like the sink of many colors. This is going to be cute. The red is as bad as the black. Yes, you are. It looks like something has been, like there's a crime scene. <laughs> you have red paint all over you. It gets all over everything. you got to be careful. Caitlin says we're problem solvers. We're problem solvers because we're problem makers. I feel like when you when you live a problematic life, you get good at solving things. I think I like the stool better now. Thanks, Cindy. I like it better too. The brown wasn't bad, but it just wasn't good either. It's just kind of bleh. And the black makes it look more like it's cast iron, which is kind of the vibe I was going for. And if you buy the, like the industrial cast iron stool, those are big bucks. And I love cast iron. That's all the pools in the entire house, like the drawer pools and knob pools are all cast iron. One time when Redrick was a baby, I was doing something. I don't know what it was. And I had been in the middle of staining and the kids were supposed to be watching Redrick, and he dumped over, he, he was a little little, he dumped over an entire quart of stain. It wasn't my, my finest mom moment. I think I was pregnant with Jack, that was gone working, and Harrington was supposed to be watching him, and I remember yelling at Harrington pretty good. Um, I'm kind of sad that I yelled at him that bad, because he was supposed to be watching me, and he didn't, and like Redrick was poopy, and like the poop had shot up his back, and there was stain everywhere, and we had to put Redrick in the shower, and I was scrubbing and crying, and then I felt bad because I yelled at my kids, and you know, I feel like when you're first learning how to be a mom, you get so stressed out, you don't know how to handle things as well. I've apologized like a million times to my oldest son for all, <laughs> all he had to deal with while I was learning how to be a mom, but I scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed, and I used vinegar and baking soda to like get a reaction, and then I used Dawn dish soap and spray and wash, and I scrubbed and I scrubbed and scrubbed my carpet, and I was able to get an entire quart of stain out of my carpet. I used a carpet cleaner to just pull it out, and I think by the time Zeb got home, this is when he worked, I just got tired, I'd probably been scrubbing for about five hours, and we got it out. It's funny because we've only been doing YouTube for, for five years since Zeb quit his job, but I, had been doing furniture many years before that, and I had a full-time job that I worked from home, and I did daycare, and I painted furniture, and I had a million and four kids, and Zeb was gone all the time because he worked at Discount Tire, and those years were so crazy. I don't know how I made it through. 
I don't know how my children made it through. But they all learned to be very resourceful and how to figure things out. That sometimes would help, but I did most everything myself. When the business got so big and crazy and busy that I needed help, that's when Zed quit his job. Which he hated his job, so it was a win-win. He was glad that there was somewhere he could go and work. That wasn't that. lesson in paint spills like when they first happen you freak out right and you think that it's the worst thing that could ever happen but then you figure out how to fix the paint you clean it up and then a few months from now it's like you don't even think about it and that's life like sometimes life is really hard and it's messy and you got to figure out how to clean it up but then you do figure it out and you make it and you clean it up and you move on I was telling about the time that um, Redrick spilled a whole quart of stain and you were at work remember oh. and <laughs> I had to have Harrington give him a bath and clean up all the poop because he pooped his pants and went up the bath. And oh, I was, when he was a little, little guy. Yeah, he was little, little. Um, and I was like scrubbing carpet and Harrington was maybe uh, 10 or 11 trying to figure out how to give a toddler a bath because I had to clean it. Oh. oh, I was telling him that I apologized for Harrington for the years of... I was trying to you know what? Life. That's part of being the oldest. Uh, I was the oldest, and you know, you're basically the kid that your parents experiment on and, <laughs> and try out all the things that they don't really know what they're doing. So by the time we get to Jack, we'll be pretty decent parents. But well, you know, Harrington I, got experimental parents. <laughs> I uh, am just more chill now. I feel like Jack isn't necessarily that much better behaved than Harrington. I just don't care about a lot of stuff. I've learned that it's just not that big a deal. All right, I got another one for you to stencil okay. over just here. There's a lot of touch up that I got to Trying to here, let's go way over here. You kind of got paint in this area. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Well, the bottom won't matter the that bottom much. But I'm just so trying. So this is Barstool number three. Three. Yeah. I was thinking while I was outside, we should have the number one stool be missing while Harrington's gone. Oh, and because then he's we'll... the number one kid? Yeah. That would be cute. Yeah, let's do that. Be like, look, Harrington, we can't replace you, so this bar stool will sit empty until you come home. Or I'll use it at my uh, desk upstairs. Because <laughs> you're number one? Well, I'm thinking I might get a lower desk. You know, I tried a standing desk. No, we have the drafting desk that I've been hoarding for you on the back porch of the... Well, I think I have, that's a standing desk, too, and I'm ready no, to it's... sit in a comfy loungy chair. No, you can... <laughs> it's not that high. You can sit in, a, like, a loungy stool in it. Okay. I'll get you a loungy stool. Is there such a thing as a loungy stool? I will find one. You will you will hunt one down? I, I got a old drafting desk. It used to be the front desk at Molly's. It's from Lehigh High School from like the 30s or 40s. So it's kind of sensitive. It is, it is cool. I, we, I and do you were so excited when there. I got it. And we literally have nowhere else to put it. I'm still excited. It's awesome. Wow, we're way back here. I was actually going to use your granddad's stool that we have and reupholster it, but it does not have a back, so maybe not. Okay, that's done. But it does roll up and down. It does roll up and down. He used it at his, work, at his workbench for years. All right, I'm going to go sand this one, and then we'll have four done. I think we'll do the other one later, and that right. should be about right. I'll just put these sitting where they're supposed to go, so I don't accidentally mess them up. But now I feel like I need to mess them up so that they stay consistently messed up like it was intentional. Hold on, guys. I'm going to be back over here in a second. Oh, good. I got some fingerprints on this one. All right. That one's in. We got seven minutes. Let's see if we can get this finished. Because heaven knows when the video's over, we have to get back to working on the siding. What is going on behind your sink window? Oh, <laughs> um, that's just all the buffets and dressers that I have painted for the farmhouse. If they're covered in tarps while we wait to finish the floors in the addition. Once we did the floors in this part of the house, I couldn't have them in here anymore. I mean, I guess I could move them back in now, but I didn't want to. So they're just covered to protect them from the weather. As we start finishing the floors in the new part of the house, then we will put the vanities back in. 
because they're all like bathroom vanity. So there's a dresser with a mirror that's all the way done for my parents, and then there's a couple buffets that are mostly done for my bathroom and the kids' bathroom. So it's a little weird. There's like a big green tarp back there. What will the flooring be upstairs? So we bought um, all wood flooring and three quarter oak that's called utility grade because it's like seconds. It was only like $1.29 a square foot from Lumber Liquidators because we bought 2,600 square feet of it. And every, so the whole house is gonna be that. And eventually I think it'll all be painted white. We might do stained floors upstairs or just seal them, not stain them at all. But I haven't decided. For sure everything on the first floor is gonna be white painted. And yes, I know that wood in the bathrooms isn't great, but back in the day, wood in the bathrooms is all they had. So we're just gonna seal it really good and hope for the best, because I don't love tile. A lot of people recommended tile heaters, but those take a long time and they're expensive, and I also don't love the look of it. So we're just gonna go with wood. And the wood was cheap, so. Probably what we'll do though, I'm thinking, is we're gonna like paint the subfloor with a waterproof membrane, so if there is ever a leak, the subfloor is protected and then we would only have to replace the wood floor because that's the worst thing that happens. When you have leaks, the subfloor gets ruined. That is a pain in the butt to fix. And they make a waterproof membrane that you can paint on it. I actually should probably do that here fairly quickly. It takes a little bit to dry. I'm like making sure that I don't have any paint on the floor. Shelly says, when I had twins, I quickly gave up trying to do, be the do-it-all mom. I was survival only, and then it being one of the best mental shifts I've made, let, it, let go of a lot. I'm actually pretty good at being chill because, yeah, motherhood does that to you. I was talking to Odelia yesterday, and she was like, we're talking about being a mom. And I said, you know, the thing about being a mom that has helped me is that I have learned that I don't have control over anything and that it also made me go, I was raised by myself, which is why you probably will hear me say, I and me a lot instead of we, just because I'm not used to saying we because I, everything was I or me. I get a lot of crap about that. Like I don't respect them because I don't say we. That's not the case, it's just a bad habit. Anyways, when I became a mom, I had to learn that life did not revolve around me. In fact, for many years, I actually didn't take enough time to myself and my whole life did revolve around my children and I had to learn to balance taking care of myself, because if I didn't take care of myself, I couldn't take care of them. And I'm doing a little better these days. I still, you know, cut my hair maybe twice a year and I don't color it. I do get my lashes done, that's my me time. I take a nap every two weeks and get my eyelashes done. If you see our earlier videos, you can see what I mean about not taking time for myself. I look at him like, girl, did you even brush your hair before you did that video? There are many times I had no makeup on. There are many videos I'm not even wearing a bra. Because life was that busy. Okay. What's that? Caitlin says, what is, it, what is it with our family that we only cut our hair twice a year? I don't know. Mariah's moving here, so Mariah's a stylist, and I'm sure she'll keep me. Cut. Christy is a stylist too and she cuts my hair when she can, but she works for me so she's super busy right now. My lash lady actually does hair and so I am going in next week, 30 minutes early, for her to cut my hair. I told her, I'm like, I'll come with it wet, you don't have to style it, I don't have that kind of time. You can just cut it and then we'll do my lashes. So I have to go in at like 7.30 to get my hair cut. Renee says if she waits till the end of the month, it'll be a year since she's cut her hair. That's impressive. My hair has a lot of split ends. So that's the main reason I want to cut it. Jenna says I want the lashes, but I'm scared. I feel like being scared is warrantable. Like, if you get somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, you can have serious issues. I personally know the lady that does my lashes. I've known her for probably the better part of 10 years. And she's just really, really good at what she does. I wouldn't just go to just anybody. But for me, I like it because we film so much and it's really hard when you're filming at midnight and you've got two black eyes, your makeup's all worn off. 
So having lashes just is, makes it better to film. And is it like important in the grand scheme of things? Maybe not, but it just makes me feel a little bit more confident about myself. So it's worth it. I'm just talking to myself. And I'm back. And my partner's back. Sorry, we should have sanded these beforehand, but I, we were like, oh, you know, maybe we'll just do these, and we we decided to do these this morning, and then well, well I up. decided to do them yesterday, but we were busy, man. We were at a football game, and we were finishing, starting the siding. I was gonna say finishing the siding, but starting the siding. And now we gotta find the keys. I told everybody to pray for you. Oh, can... yeah, I don't know. I think they're in the pocket in the pants I wore last night into the right, game. All right, I'll go look. Hey. I'm gonna move this. Can you move the, this over there, Zeb? Yeah. Can you just stencil that one? Yeah. But I'm gonna. Hey, that yeah. one is not screwed on. I just set it there to dry. Okay, well, we can show them what it looks like. We're almost there. Without screwing it in. And I have a spray gun full of sealer, so if we get them done enough, then later I will take them out back when it warms up and I'll spray them the bases with sealer and call it good. Yeah, it's getting, getting really nice and cool at night, but the day yesterday was 81, and I was feeling it. It was hot out in front of the house on the south side of the house, putting that siding up with that driveway there, just reflecting the heat back at me. Yeah, it was, it was warm. I got a little sweaty. It's okay, today we're gonna finish the front up to the gable because I gotta go get different lap side into the gable part of it. And then we'll start on that long side. And that long side should make us feel like we're champs at it because it's just basically one window on that side. So it should be minimal cuts. Oops, this one I can go in the middle. I think I'm just gonna run a string line. It's 54 feet long on the long side of the house. I'm just gonna run a string line and we'll just put it to that. Okay. I'm gonna put this bar stool over here. Maybe today I'll find some time to work on the island some more. Well, are you gonna distress it back to the green? Cause it's painted green underneath. Yeah, I am. I just haven't got around to finishing it. Is it Sweetie Jane or Pantry Door? Pantry Door. Pantry Door. Okay, we'll show them the four over there, and then I think, yeah, it's 11, so. Okay, well, we, if you, you gotta finish it anyways, or else you won't be done. Or are no, you gonna make I'll, me do I'll it? I'll finish it while you go find my keys. While I go find your keys? All or right, sorry I'll guys. I'll go find my keys, and you can finish it. Oh man, you really cranked that down. What now, can the camera see? They can see what I'm doing. Kinda. They can absolutely see what I'm doing. All right. <laughs> can you get a comment if you guys can see what I'm doing? Got a few fingerprints I gotta smear out here. Karen Weber, yeah, truly a house that blood, sweat, and tears. My dad has a saying, and it's probably because he's a mechanic, but he says if you don't bleed on it, you didn't do a good job. All right, there we go. And we're back. They love the viewpoint. Great ankle. I look really skinny. Ooh. <laughs> Let's film with that some more. It's the black shirt. Stress eating, so I'll get back on my healthy eating next month. Oh. Deb and I are going to work on our our exercise. We're going to get the uh, elliptical out and get back to having a normal human. Schedule. We got rid of the elliptical. We have a treadmill. Nothing. Well, that thing, whatever. That thing that you run on. Yeah. Debbie view. <laughs> and Debbie does put her camera up high. Will you be your area you'll always be filming from, or you'll be setting up filming area in your new addition? So. We will film our thrift hauls from the kitchen because we're just super close to the shop. And, and it's, it's, man, this big island standing here is so easy to work on stuff. Yeah, it's great to work on stuff. So we'll probably put a drop cloth behind us and we'll have drop cloths on the top of this. Um, the garage is gonna be half workshop and half my parking space because Deb has a lot of tools. I'm gonna actually need a big barn sooner than yes. later to do my projects. And even when the garage is not a half workshop, I won't be parking in there because my truck's too big. <laughs> well, I have a big swap sink. All right. You could get a smaller truck. That's not a real thing. That's not a real thing. You just, you just continuously get bigger and bigger so you can haul more and more things. 
I don't, I don't know. I'm, pl I'm pre-planning for our Your picking F trip back east sometime. Oh, is that why you need the F-350? Yes, so that I can haul like a huge gooseneck trailer and we just load that thing up. I feel like we've come a long way from when we were newlyweds and you have that Chevy Love with the bag for a window. That Chevy Love was <laughs> the best truck I've ever had. It got like 40 miles to the gallon. Well, if that's the case, can we get rid of your new truck and I'll go find you one? Sure. <laughs> yeah, right. I once hauled 16 semi-truck trailers in the back of that truck. Semi-truck tires? Or tires, yeah. <laughs> Zeb has worked really, really hard. So he, between the two of us, he was the first one to get the super posh car. And that was the truck that we bought last year. Mostly it's a tax write off, but his truck is pretty nice and he definitely deserves every bit of it. I was thinking about painting a tile pattern on some concrete pavers. Will DIY soak in well? Hold on, or does it still need to be sealed? If it's gonna go outside, it needs to be sealed. But the DIY paint, especially if they're concrete that's like porous, it will soak in super, super well. All right, I'm gonna line these stools up and we'll show them and I'll sand that in a minute. Okay. You guys get the idea. We're gonna do a number I just, five. I want the bases, just make sure the bases are super, super dry or move that, um, move the, uh, whatever. Okay, so let's, let's at least put them in sequential order. Tracy says they still have their 1980 Chevy Love truck. And it's, I think it, I think essentially it was an Isuzu that Chevy had rebranded, but I loved it. It will be cold this weekend and rainy in Utah. Well, if that's the case, we gotta get that outside finished today. Yeah, we gotta go. That was like, we should do this. I'm like, no, we gotta get the outside done. Um, well, the house is dried in essentially. Like the roof is all done. Yeah, but we gotta get it painted. Yeah. We gotta finish for our refi. We could live in it unpainted, but maybe he'll just dock us like the $500 the paint would cost on the like, appraisal. The color of the sign, that's what <laughs> like we're doing it ourselves, so we quoted it at zero dollars for labor. <laughs> I got it. it works like that. All right. Let's. Yay! I think I still need to seal the number four chair, but I like it. How's that look, guys? It looks good. One, two, I three, four. I like not numbering them because I wanted it to be fancy, but I like the numbering because it's fun. So once we distress the island, it'll be a little bit chippier. I think it's going to be a really good mix of old and new. Well, and I really, let me go grab the other wood before we take off here so you can see the contrast. I really like the light of wood. The light wood is good. It pairs well with what we've got going on in the bar. All right. Because it looks more homey with bar stools. Yeah, it's Every getting time there. Every add something, it adds a little homey texture. Okay. So here's the color the wood was before. I just, I feel like that just matches everything we've got going in here so much better with the light wood than this reddish, brown. It's All almost right, like so a cedar color. We have three bar stools available at jrvhome.com. They're $69.95, but that includes shipping, which is the majority of the $69.95 because it's a big box. They come in two pieces, so you have to screw it in, um, and you would have to fix them so they're not wobbly. But I just thought we have three left, so maybe somebody might want them. And maybe the wobbly won't even bother you because it it wasn't like knock you off bad. It was just every time it wobbled, Jack would spill whatever he had in his hand, drinking or whatever. Yeah, it'll probably Because we eat a lot at our bar. We do kind of a buffet style. We'll set the food up and then the kids will get on the other side and eat. And, and uh, you know, every now and well, then, about twice a week, we'll have like a, everybody gets together and eats at the dinner table. I, do I have black on my face? Yes, all over. You touched yourself here, 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 and here. <laughs> All right, well, we right. will finish this one. I'm gonna go sand that in a little bit. Tomorrow, we've got the uh, the Home Shopping Network. More Christmas coming? Uh, yes, more Christmas is coming in this basement. Super excited about that. Make sure you're hitting up jrbhome.com if you wanna look for those bar stools or any home decor. jamierayvintage.com is where you can get the paint and product that we use today. The paint and the stencils. The stencils, all of the things. Um, we did sell out of the new IOD transfers but we are getting restock of most everything. 
that have been out of stock on IOD. Hopefully we'll get those up for pre-sale on the website pretty soon, so watch that. And we do still have decoupage paper um, that's new on the website, so check that out. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to January Vintage for more. DIY. Love you guys. Oh, Thanks looks for like joining I touched us. my face, too, and I didn't even have paint. Well, maybe I touched your face. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that. <laughs>